there are actually a lot of things that I would love to cover with you guys this afternoon, but we've only got so much time, so I've distilled it down to three things. One, blood, two, boobs, and three, the issue of women in the tech industry. <laughs> About a year ago, my friend Sophie Hauser from Bard High School Early College and I were riding what we thought were our 15 minutes of fame. We had launched a simple video game just the month before and were getting written up in major newspapers, magazines, blogs, pretty big time publications from all over the world. Tampon Run, our claim to fame, is an endless running game purposed with destigmatizing menstruation. Instead of giving a player bullets for ammunition, we supplied them with tampons, which they hurled at oncoming enemies. <laughs> but this menstrual taboo, which Tampon Run addresses, isn't just about being embarrassed when a tampon falls out of someone's bag or when a girl is too shy to ask her parents to go to the drugstore for her. Many women in India can't touch food or socialize with others while they're menstruating. Sanitary napkins are very expensive, and in some countries, the only other option are dirty rags, which put them at risk of infection and disease. Signs like these are often found in front of temples, mosques, and other religious institutions because, in their eyes, menstruation is disgusting and unholy. Many organizations are working to fix this, but it's hard to be impactful when no one in India, America, or the rest of the world wants to talk about it. Tampon Run merely served as like an icebreaker, a conversation starter for the healthy discussion of menstruation and proper sanitary care. And now Tampon Run has over half a million users through our web game and iOS app, and it's like the year of menstruation where women are running marathons without pads, fighting Instagram over community guidelines concerning menstrual blood, and really tackling the stigma of menstruation head on. However, Tampon Run wasn't the original product that I pitched to Sophie. I wanted to make a game about the depiction of women in video games. The issue of women in video games is a pretty deeply rooted problem. Even old popular titles which non-gamers would recognize have the same demeaning structure. In Legend of Zelda or Super Mario Brothers, Zelda and Peach merely serve as a sort of trophy which Link and Mario respectively have to rescue. Nowadays, games like Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid, Street Fighter, and countless others all perpetuate the hypersexualization and objectification in women, all to pander to their perceived straight male audience. I say perceived because in reality, video games are played by women almost as much as by men. 48%, in fact. People may say that games are being played by, like, like Nintendogs or Kim Kardashian Hollywood or other softcore games, but even if that were true, it would be just because of how hardcore games and the stereotypes of the gaming community make women feel unwelcome. When Sophie and I released Tampon Run last year, we were quickly made aware that we had launched our video game in the midst of a crazy online movement, otherwise known as Gamergate. Gamergate first started when female developer Zoe Quinn uh, was accused of sleeping with other video game journalists to publicize her own video game. This wasn't true, but the movement reached peak when Gamergate advocates targeted women in gaming, released their home addresses along with other very sensitive information, and barraged them with so many rape and death threats that they were forced to flee their homes. Sophie and I were lucky enough never to receive any of de these death threats, but we did get a lot of cool suggestions for what our next game could be. Most popularly, Condom Run. <laughs> Gamergate advocates hide behind the veil of ethics in video game journalism, but in reality, they're just a very small but loud group of cyber bullies who are clinging on to an extremely antiquated notion of what kind of person belongs in the gaming community. Now, Gamergate advocates are the minority. However, it brings to light the degree of exclusivity both the game and the tech industry can harbor. Tampon Run, Gamergate, and the experiences that I've heard from other women have helped me come to realize that women have been marginalized in the tech industry, both as users and as creators. As it stands, 26% of professional computing occupations are held by women, which doesn't seem all that bad at first. However, if we push a little deeper, it gets worse. 
when we think about big tech companies like Google, Amazon, Twitter, Facebook, and the like, that percentage drops down to 15%. When we look at the game industry as a whole, it drops down to 3%. It's no wonder women don't express interest in video games, because they're made by men, for men, and when women decide to publicly express interest in them, they're driven away. Yes, these numbers are intimidating, but honestly, I am very optimistic. If you've noticed in the past couple of years, women in tech has become a really hot topic. And it's really exciting to see new communities and organizations fostering positive communities for women to learn how to code. In fact, Sophie and I made Tampon Run thanks to one of these organizations. Girls Who Code was founded in 2012 and has been working ardently to bridge the, the gender gap since then. Sophie and I were lucky enough to participate in one of their seven-week all-girl summer immersion programs in 2014. And without the nurturing environment that Girls Who Code provided us, we would not have felt comfortable enough to develop Tampon Run. The first week that I went to a co-ed co computer camp, I was one in four girls, and that included the staff. Yeah. Now that camp has a much better girl-to-guy ratio, and Girls Who Code has doubled in size for the second year in a row, thanks to the wealth of other large corporations which have stepped up and offered mentorship, funding, and spaces for these young girls to learn. Even Tampon Run shifted from being just a conversation starter about menstruation to serving as an example for what women can offer in tech. We got emails from all over the world, from women in the tech industry, supporters of the growing diverse movement for diversity in tech, and most importantly, young girls who wanted to learn more about how they could learn to program for themselves. Young women are finally realizing the potential that they have as computer scientists, and I'm happy to say that the world is recognizing that too. So while the future looks bright for women in tech, our job is far from done. Code is an amazing medium, and it allows so much creativity, but not a lot of people realize that. Integrating CS classes into elementary school curriculums can help generate interest in programming from a very young age in both boys and girls. We can also encourage women already in the tech industry to step forward as mentors so, they can, so young women can see what they can become. Even if you're not a woman, you can still be very active in the community, either by pushing for diversity actively in your workplace or taking on a mentee of your own. Ultimately, we have to help girls understand that if they're interested in computer science, they shouldn't be afraid to take that first step, to just do it. Because by having more women, the tech industry will have a stronger community, make more varied, innovative, and gender-inclusive products, and better serve our world as a whole. Thank you. <laughs>